Create a vector drawing in Adobe Illustrator CC. Before we get started, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications. Also, check out the previous tutorials by clicking on the link above. Hello everyone, in this tutorial we are creating a vector drawing by creating a guide using the ellipse and rectangle tool, subtracting from shape using the pen tool, the reflect tool, duplicating objects using the rotate tool, and using the shape builder tool. Number 1. Create a guide. To get started, open your start image. I drew a sketch of what I want my drawing to look like, so I opened it in Adobe Illustrator and go to the Layers panel, lock the current layer, and create a new one where we will be drawing. Now go to View Rulers or press Command or Control R to show the rulers. Go to the left side ruler, click on it, and drag it to the center of your image to create a guideline. Number 2, Ellipse Tool. So let's start by creating the face of our image. Select the ellipse tool, hold shift while you draw your circle to make it perfectly round. Go to the top bar to change the size of your circle. I'm going to make it 10 centimeters. Also, I'm going to change the stroke to a red to make it more visible and the stroke width to 2 pixels. Go back to the ellipse tool to create a second circle. This time, I'm just going to click on the board instead of drawing it myself and enter the size of the circle, 9 centimeters. Position the new shape, and if you like, select both circles and use the align panel to align the two shapes to the center. Number 3, subtract from shape. Select the rectangle tool to create a new shape. Then select the add anchor point tool to add two anchor points to the center of the new shape. Select the two new anchor points and slightly pull them down to create a corner. While the points are still selected, pull on the little icon that appears to make the corner round. Now select the smaller circle in the new shape. Go to Pathfinder and press on minus front. And this will subtract the shape that is above uh, from the shape that is underneath. Number four, pen tool. Select the pen tool and click on a point where you want your path to start. Click on the point and drag it to create a curved line. Then click on a second point and drag it as well if you want to continue with the curved line. As you can see, it creates an automatic C curve. To close the path, click on the point where you've started. Hold shift if you want the line to close in a curve. If not, just click on the anchor point. Use the direct selection tool to move points and to modify curves. When you're satisfied, continue adding shapes to complete the eye. I colored one of the circles white because I'm going to subtract it from the eye shape. Number 5, Reflect Tool. First of all, I'm going to group the two shapes that form the eye. Select the group and click on the Reflect Tool. A window will open. Select the direction you want to flip your object. Press on Copy to make a reflected copy of your object. If not, just press OK. To draw the nose, I've created a triangle. I'm going to select just the two bottom corners and make them curved leaving the top two corners in an angle. I'm using the rectangle tool to draw this other shape as well. By using the direct selection tool to move points and using it to corner angles when necessary as well. Select the scissor tool to split a path. Click on the parts of the path you want to split. When you're done, just delete unnecessary segments. The nice thing about this drawing is that it is symmetrical. All you have to do is draw half of it and then reflect it to the other side. 
Number six, duplicate object. This is a very interesting and cool feature. So let's start by drawing uh, this shape. So use the ellipse tool to draw a circle and then uh, start by adding the details. What I'm going to show you is the five small circles. Instead of uh, drawing them and positioning them uh, ourselves, we are just going to draw one and duplicate it. Select the ellipse tool and draw your first circle. So let's start with the one on the left bottom. Then keep it selected and go to the rotate tool and that little blue point is the rotating point. So we're going to click on the center of the big circle so the rotating point will be in the center of the bigger circle. Then select the circle that we started with Hold Alt and drag it and you can see that it moves following a circle which is going around our center point. When you let go it creates a duplicate and just press Ctrl D to repeat your last action. So if you press Ctrl D three times it will create the other three circles. Another example of using Ctrl D to duplicate is if you create a line then you hold alt and drag it down to duplicate it and then if you press ctrl d it will repeat your last action so you can keep duplicating the line as many times as you want when you press ctrl d it repeats your last action so it's not referred only to duplicating an object number seven rotate tool we just used the rotate tool in the previous step, but let's use it again. So I'm going to group all of these shapes that form the earring, and then click on the rotate tool and this window will open. Enter a value which indicates how much you want your object to rotate. When you're done, press OK, or if you want to create a rotated copy, press copy. Again, I'm going to reflect these shapes and position them to the other side. Then I'm going to use the rectangle tool to draw a rectangle shape on the top here. Number 8, Shape Builder Tool. Create a circle. Use the rotate tool to create a 90 degree rotation duplicate of the circle. And then, as we learned before, press Ctrl D to duplicate it other two times. So you get a shape kind of like this one. Select the four circles and go to the left tool panel and select the Shape Builder tool. If you move the pointer over the circles, you can see that this tool detects possible shapes that can be created. To create one of these shapes, just click on it, and as you can see, it will be created. I'm clicking on all four of these shapes to create them, and you can also delete shapes by holding Alt and clicking on them. To unite two shapes, hold Shift and drag your pointer over the two shapes, and they will be united. I just rotated my new shape into position and then I'm going to move it where it needs to go on my drawing. Complete the drawing. Using all of the tools that we've just learned, like the ellipse tool, the rectangle tool, and how to cut a path, how to subtract a shape from another shape, how to add anchor points and move them, how to make rounded angles, and much more. We can finish our vector drawing. There are more shape tools than just the ones we've covered. For example, there's the star tool, where you can select how many points to give your star, and enter the inner and outer radius value. You can also combine two shapes by selecting them and going to the Pathfinder panel and selecting Unite. At this point, I'm going to go to the Layer panel and hide the layer that contains my sketch. 
and continue with my drawing without it. By selecting a path or a shape, you can change its profile. By going to the top bar, clicking on the drop down menu, you can select all the different profiles that you can give, that you can give your line. Besides the add anchor point tool, there is also the delete anchor point tool. So you select that tool and click on the anchor points you want to delete. Create a triangle by using the polygon tool and entering three sides. I'm adding a few more shapes to complete my drawing. Now that I'm finished with my drawing, I'm going to add a background color. Make sure that all of the shapes are subtracted where they're supposed to be. I'm going to give all of the lines the right width, and then I'm going to select them all and expand. Go to Object Expand. Select everything, group it all together, and if you like, change the color. As my final step, I'm adding some sun rays around the drawing. I'm going to use this vector drawing in my next tutorial and I need it with the sun rays around it. To add these, I'm using the steps that we've covered in this tutorial. When you're finished, if you like, you can add a stroke to your drawing, go to the top bar and select a type of brush definition to give it. For example, a pencil stroke. We have arrived to the end of this tutorial. I hope you found it useful and easy to follow. Stay tuned for more videos.